Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise on this evening. Hallelujah. Thank God for our worshipers. We appreciate each and every one of you that are tuning in on this evening in our midweek worship experience. Let's go into prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us this evening. Lord, we enter into your presence today, God, humbly asking, Father, that you would just have your way in us today. Use us for your will. Use us for your glory on today. And God, we pray that as the word of God will go forth, God, your people will hear it, they will receive it, and they will be blessed. God, we thank you again for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God another hand clap of praise, if you will. God bless you. It's so good to be back with you on uh, this Wednesday evening uh, uh, Bible study uh, time. And, and God is so good. Any time that we can sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus and receive out of his word, it is a blessing. And I want to deal with, uh, I want to deal with a, a, a subject matter on this evening, uh, one that perhaps may challenge some of our belief, challenge some of our thinking as far as uh, the church is concerned. You know, I know uh, this New Testament church, uh, uh, the church that Jesus founded there uh, in uh, the New Testament, it is a ever-evolving church. It is one that is uh, ever evolving into greater things. And the direction that that evolution is taking us uh, is for the church to look more like God, uh, to look more like Jesus, uh, not to evolve into something that carries us away from the image of Christ. But as the church grow and as it evolve, it's supposed to look more like Jesus. So in order for that happen or to keep this evolution on track, there are certain things that is necessary for us to uh, uh, enhance, for us to teach, for us to talk about on a consistent basis so we can uh, stay in line with the principles of God's word that induces the image of Christ in our life. Amen? So we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about some of those basic uh, principles uh, and things today that will keep us in line with the word of God that we don't evolve into something other than what God designed for us. Those of you that have your Bibles, go with us to the Gospel according to John, chapter 3. And I'm going to read verse 1 through 7 in your hearing. The Bible said, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I, I'm going to read that again. It said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born uh, when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And verse 7 says, Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. And this is one of those, this is one of those fundamental, fundamental principles that uh, the, the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this New Testament church, that this new church 
uh, rests on and stands on one of that fundamental principle that you got to be born again. You must be born again. And that that what uh, 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 brings us into this fellowship with God or into this, this church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know many may be wondering why I would take the time to deal uh, with this particular subject. And I just like I said, this is one of the fundamental subjects that we have to deal with uh, uh, consistently and deal with over and over again because it's one of the things that the church rests on. In order to come into this church of God, you got to be born again. So uh, it rests on that particular principle. You must be born again. Well, uh, another main reason is the lack of talk and conversation about this spiritual truth have degraded and sensitized the hearts of man to the point where the value of being born again means very little in the world. There was a time when the church constantly talked about being born again. It constantly talked about being saved and, and filled with the Holy Spirit. But the less talk that we talk about that, the less conversation that we have about that, then it, the, the more desensitized the hearts of man become with that particular fact. So let's face it. There was a time when most people didn't play with those words. When you made the statement, you must be born again, or I am a born again believer, they meant what they said. They didn't play with them words. They, they didn't just say it just to be saying it. But when you stood before God and you stood even before the congregation of God and said that I am born again, those words meant something. Hallelujah. When you stood before the people of God and stood before God and said that I am saved and I'm born again, they meant something. But now, bless God, anybody and everybody is saying those words. There, there's, nothing, there's nothing really special now, amen, in the minds and hearts of most people when they say those words because everybody born again now. Everybody's saved now. But today, everybody, amen, I want to say, bless God, to enter into the family of the kingdom of God Jesus said, you must be born again. Now, I'm not denying them the fact that uh, there has been a rebirth in their life. That's not my place. I, I, I'm not the judge. But when I look what the Bible entails concerning being born again, my question is, reborn to what? Reborn to what? And, and this evening, uh, again, again, I promise you, because I'm, I'm challenging, I'm challenging many of you that may be listening to me this evening, amen, uh, I, I'm challenging you, but I want you to know that I'm not the judge. I'm not standing in the place of a judge this evening. I just want to speak to you some Bible truth. I'm, I'm just uh, presenting my case according to the word of God. Those of us who are saved or say we are born again, those of us that say we are saved, uh, 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 something new supposed to be manifested in our lives. Amen. We're saying we're saved. We're saying we're born again. Something new supposed to be manifesting in our lives. 
the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it said, Behold, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. So I say again, bless God, if we are born again and if we are saved, bless God, something new ought to be manifested in our lives. Hallelujah to God. In other words, praise God, a change should have taken place. A difference should have taken place. Well, the Bible says it like this in Matthew chapter 7. It said, and ye shall know the tree by the fruit that it bears. Lord, help me this evening. I'm, I'm challenging somebody. That, that's, not, that's not Henderson's words. That's Matthew chapter 7. It said, ye shall know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Bears. And, and I don't have to judge an apple tree of being an apple tree. The fruit it bears gives it away. Lord, help me here. That, that, that sounds, that sounds pretty, pretty simple enough. The, the fruit that it has gives it away. The, the fruit is the proof. And even when it comes to people, bless God, the fruit that we bear is the proof. So I don't have to judge an apple tree. All I got to do is look at the fruit and see that it is an apple tree. In, in other words, what you consistently do give you away of who you really are. I'm, I'm going to say that one again. What you consistently do give you away of who you really are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I make this, I make this uh, uh, comparison a, a lot of times in, 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 in when, I, when I need to. Bless God, when I was a little child, when I was a little child, bless God, we just called things what they were. Man come down the street with an old truck picking up junk. We would say, here come the junk man. Guy come down the street with a whole bunch of fruit on the back of the truck. We say, here come the, the vegetable man. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We just call it what it is. Did, didn't have to judge the man. About, by, uh, 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 didn't have to judge him, uh, you know. But, but uh, what he consistently did gave him away. So, so it is with people. What we consistently do gives us away. Anybody hear it? So that, that, that's, that's all I'm saying. The Bible says, the Bible says in verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And here, here's another analogy that, that I like to use, bless God. You see, that is something that ties into conception. There's something that ties into development called DNA. Anybody ever heard Dana? It's called DNA. And it's through DNA that different characteristics are formed and are shared, bless God, from those that are involved in the conception process. So a little bit from the man, a little bit from the mama, bless God, is put together and forms something totally different. But it has a little bit of both in the DNA. Anybody hear me on today? Okay, what's my point? What's my point? My point is that if you are born again, anybody hearing me this evening, if you are born again, if you are born of the Spirit, then there ought to be some characteristics of the Spirit of God in your life. Help me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are born of the Spirit of God, then you should at least look like in some kind of way, look like God. You should in some kind of way, talk like God. You should in some kind of way, act like God. Am I teaching this evening? 
Why? Because you have the DNA of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. So you ought to look like him. You ought to talk like him. You ought to act like him in some kind of way. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So in some kind of way, we need to look like God because he has a he had a part in our spiritual conception. How I many know you can't get saved unless the Spirit of God saved you? So he had a part in our spiritual conception. Hallelujah. Understand, understand uh, this evening, Bible students, everybody want to look, amen, the same. Everybody won't look the same, bless God, in this process. Everybody won't act the same in this process. And I know everybody won't talk the same in this process. And that's the beauty of the body of Christ. There are many parts in the body that makes up a whole. Are you listening to me? You can take, you can take the body, you can take the body uh, a T.O.P., the church of T.O.P., amen, you have different parts of the body. You have worshipers. You have praisers. You have uh, workers. You have servants. You, you have musicians. You have uh, people in ministry. You have different parts that make up the body of T.O.P. But here's the thing. I don't care what part that you play or what part that you make up, we all should have the same spiritual DNA. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we do different things. We do different things. and we, 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 we serve in different ways, but our DNA all to match. Help me, Holy Ghost, today. Hallelujah. We all should have the same DNA. And, 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 and we all should in some kind of way, even though we got different administrations, we do different things, we all in some kind of way ought to look like Jesus. Uh, uh, hallelujah to God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And see, that, that doesn't mean that all of, all of life should be easy because we got Jesus' DNA in us. doesn't mean that all life going to be easy because when you look at Jesus, when you look at Jesus, Jesus has some scars. Uh, and see, those, those scars let us know that even his life went easy. And, and when you really look at it, Jesus, got, Jesus has some scars like we'll never see. Jesus had some hurts like we'll never feel. Jesus had some disappointments like we'll never go through. Anybody hear me today? So it's not, it's not that all of life is going to be easy because you got the, 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 the spiritual DNA of Jesus in your life. It amazes me how we can have natural children in life that we cannot de deny. Some of you listening to me, you know, you can't deny your child even if you wanted to. <laughs> look, look just like you, walk like you. Look, they, 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 wait, 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 they look like you, they got your features. Now here's, here's, here's the difference though, they may not act like you though. <laughs> They, they may not act all like you, but they, but they got a lot of your traits. They got a lot of your characteristics. They, they, they look like you. They walk like you. They, they, they talk like you. Somebody say amen. So, but but, but, but we, we cannot deny them. But, but our heavenly father can have children huh. that don't look like him. And don't act like him. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's, it's an amazing. We can have children look just like us, but when it comes down to, to, to God, you know, we got folk that claim to be his, but don't look nothing like him. They don't act like it. 
<laughs> anybody, anybody hear me today? And as we would say in the natural, as we are saying in the natural, it's something wrong somewhere. It's something, something wrong somewhere. They don't look like me. Don't talk like me. Don't act like me. And I know, I, I, I know, I know they say it's in the genes, it's in the genes, but what kind of genes? Might be in the Wranglers and Levi's, I don't know. But if it's authentic, it ought to somehow or another look like Jesus. It ought to act like Jesus. It ought to talk like Jesus, amen, in some kind of way. Can you imagine the dilemma that Jesus must deal with all the time? When people come to him, come to him knocking at the throne room door, saying, Jesus, you my daddy. Anybody hear me? And I know, I, I know they say, I, I, I know they say they are mine. Jesus saying, I, I don't know them like that. I, I don't know them like that. Not only, not only do I supposed to be their savior, not only do I supposed to be their elder brother, because those who have been born again are now sons of God too. I remember, I remember the Holy Ghost told me in a previous message that I preached some time back, many folks skip the born-again process. Many folks skip the born-again process and just showed up at the door. Some of you probably remember that. They just showed up at the door, knock on the door. Say, hey, 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 God, you my daddy. Just showed up and said, you my daddy. I'm your child. But how many know when it comes to spiritual things, bless God, it don't work like that. Because the Bible said God knows those that are his. Now it is wonderful to be numbered as one of the children of God. But the question is, did the Lord have anything do to do with the conception? That's the question. Did the Lord have anything to do with the conception? Well, why, why do you ask that question, Pastor? Well, one reason is most everybody claiming to be born again nowadays never had a conception experience to be born. They just showed up, hallelujah, and said, that's my daddy. Now, in our text, in our text, as I prepare to close, Jesus laid out the process of rebirth to Nicodemus. Who, who did I say laid out the process? Who did I say? Jesus laid out the process of rebirth. To Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a young ruler who realized something was missing in his life. Listen, a well place in society may give you temporary commitment, but nothing can fill the longing soul like Jesus. Let the church say amen. The songwriter says, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, who realized that there was something about Jesus. There's something special about Jesus. I, I sense something powerful in the life of Jesus. No doubt, he stood afar off, and he witnessed the power of God. He witnessed the miracles that was performed uh, through the hands of Jesus. Uh, he witnessed the souls uh, that were being saved uh, through the power of Jesus Christ. Uh, and in spite of his disposition, 
talking about this, this, this ruler here. A man of stature, a man of prominence, uh, he sought to inquire about G, this Jesus phenomenon. Something about that man. I got to get the, I got to figure this thing out. It's something about him. I sent something in the atmosphere. I sent something about his presence that is greater than anything that I have experienced before. And the Bible says in verse number two that this man, Nicodemus, he came to Jesus by night. Oh, a lot of, lot of preachers and a lot of uh, uh, philosophers, they want to make something big about him slipping away at night uh, coming to Jesus. Ah, you have some that want to make a deal by him coming by night, whereas uh, most of us that say today probably came to Jesus by night. We even made a song about it. I went to church one night. They even made a song about it. I went to church one night, and my heart wasn't right. But while I was there, something got a hold of me. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah to God. Amen. So he came to Jesus by night. Amen. And, and my point that I'm getting at is uh, that is never a bad time to come to Jesus. Listen, I don't care if you come at 12 o'clock midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, 6 a.m., 9 a.m., or 12 high noon. As long as you get to Jesus, and any time you get to Jesus, and you come to Jesus with your heart right, I mean, no, Jesus will meet you at the point of your need. Somebody say amen. I heard one songwriter say, I came to Jesus. Just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made my heart glad. Somebody give God a shout in the house of God tonight. Uh, and Jesus, and Jesus, uh, he goes on to explain to Nicodemus. Uh, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. He said, you must be, you must be, you got to be born again to inherit eternal life. And Nicodemus, he turned and asked, uh, how can this thing be? And the Bible says uh, it's like this. He said, when you sow a seed into the ground, you must die in the ground first before it can live and grow or come to life. Somebody say amen. Well, before our spirit man can be born again, amen, there's a spiritual death that has to take place. Those of you that are in the room or even in your homes, there where you are, look over and tell somebody the old man must die. Ah, uh, come on, say the old man uh, must die. Oh, yes, it got to die first. Uh, and understand, bless God, the old Lee had to die uh, before the new and improved Lee uh, can come to life. Uh, somebody say amen. Uh, see, some of y'all would not have wanted to meet the old Lee. Hallelujah. You want you would not have wanted to meet the old Lee. Hallelujah. But thank God for the new and improved Son of God. Somebody say amen. You see, 43 years ago, the old Lee died. He died at the altar. But a new Lee was born at the same altar. Somebody say amen. Now, now I know the Antichrist spirit is saying that it don't take all of that. It is saying we all are the children of God. And that born again stuff is not necessary in this new age. Ah, uh, but be not deceived, my brothers and sisters. Uh, the truth may not be sensational, but it's still the truth. 
Somebody say with me, it's still the truth. Satan has come up with so many sensational lies. Help me tonight, Holy Ghost. So many sensational lies uh, which have out-publicized the truth. But the truth is still the truth. Anybody hear me? When the lies have lost its fizzle, when the lies have lost its sensation, the truth of God's word will stand unchanged. Can I get a witness in the house of God? Even, even if they hold fast to the deception and lies of Satan all the way to the judgment, the truth will still prevail in the end. Somebody said the truth. And the truth is, you must. You must. You must. Are you listening to me out there? The truth is, you must be born again. This new birth is our path to citizenship into the kingdom of God. There's a lot of talk today about illegal immigrants. Ah, uh, an illegal, bless God, uh, uh, citizenship and a path to citizenship. Well, how many know uh, uh, when you really look at it from a spiritual point of view that we all are immigrants? The Bible lets us know that we're strangers in a foreign land. We are pilgrims traveling through this barren land. But the access to the kingdom of God, we all are welcome into the kingdom. You may not be welcome into certain countries, but God said you're welcome into the kingdom. But in order to come into the kingdom legally, you must be born again. Anybody hear me? Look at John 3 and 16. The Bible said, for God so loved who? He so loved the world. The world. He so loved everybody that that whosoever do what? Believeth in him. See, that believeth in him is that born again process. If you believe in him, uh, you shall have uh, everlasting life or eternal life. Hallelujah to God. The path to citizenship through is the new birth. You got to be born again. Money can't get you in there. Education can't get you in. Social status can't get you in. Your name can't get you in. But you must be born again. In spite of what the world is saying against the word of God. Amen. Somebody help me this evening. Tell somebody the price that was paid, amen, was too high for your access to be null and void. Jesus paid the ultimate price. Thank God for Jesus. I said, thank God for Jesus. According to the word of God, the Bible said he bore our sicknesses. He bore our sins upon himself. The Bible said he endured the cross, despising the shame, so we can gain access into the kingdom of God. Amen. He shedded his precious blood. Hallelujah. How precious, how precious is that blood that maketh me white as snow. And I just want you to know this evening, be not deceived, my brothers and sisters. Don't live life on willpower. That won't get you into the kingdom. But it's going to take the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. And I know somebody may be saying, my life is messed up, Pastor. You just don't understand. Well, my friends, I, I got good news for you this evening. Oh, the precious blood, the precious blood, the precious blood of Jesus. 
it still reaches to the highest mountain and it still flows to the lowest valley amen bless God it still reaches the high class it can go down and reach the low class the middle class my God, it can even reach the no class if you repent and receive Jesus Christ into your life. Bless God, through the new birth, you can be saved. Can I get a witness in the house? Those of you that are saved, won't he change your life? Those of you that are saved, won't he make you whole again? Those of you that are saved and have been born again, won't he give you a new beginning? Somebody here tonight, somebody out there in your home, you got a testimony. You got a testimony, a personal testimony that said, look where he brought me from. I was a non-believer one day. I was in my sins one day, but he, Jesus Christ, he brought me out. I believed on him one day, and I went through the new birth process. I gave up my old way. I died to my sins, and I was reborn into the family and into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And now I can say today that I'm saved. I am saved. I am saved. And it's because of the rebirth. So back to my initial point today. If you want to enter into this kingdom of God, my brothers and sisters, there's no other way there's no other legal way, there's no other entrance except you being born again. Born of the water, born of the spirit. The old you must die and the new you by the spirit of God to be resurrection, resurrected into the newness of life. Can't nobody make you new like Jesus. Ah, oh God. I said, can't nobody change your life like Jesus can. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make you whole again? Nothing but the blood. The blood of Jesus. Somebody out there listening to me, your life is in a wreck. Your life is in despair. And you're wondering, how am I going to get out of this? I, I, I really want to change my life. I really want to be saved. When I came to tell you, my brothers and sisters, all you got to do is give your heart to Jesus tonight. And you can experience this new birth. Even you that are right there in your home, you can experience this new birth in your life. Hallelujah. And I promise you, your life will never, never be the same. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Through, through the Spirit and the power of God, this supernatural process, the old you can be put to death. And the new you, by the Spirit of God, can be resurrected on the inside of you. A new way of thinking, a new life, a change of mind. Hallelujah. Can be resurrected down in you. That was an old song the old folks used to sing years ago. They don't sing it no more. They used to say, my mind, my mind, my mind is gone. And then they some of them said, my mind belongs to God. Listen, you can, you, can, you can put away your old way of thinking and take on the mind of Christ. Ah. Hallelujah. 
Don't let this world fool you to think that you can get into God's kingdom some other way. There's no way into God's kingdom but through Jesus Christ. But through the new birth. Jesus said you've got to be born again. You've got to be born again. But through the deception of the enemy, everybody's trying to go around the new birth. Some trying to go at the back door, the side door. They trying to get in any kind of way until everybody now, everybody now is saved. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, but by the power of God this evening, I denounce that spirit of inclusion. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Behold, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things, old things are passed away. My old way of life, my old way of doing things, that old mindset that had me doing things contrary to the word of God, it is passed away. It is gone. And behold, all things are... Now I have the mind of Christ. There's a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. Hallelujah. You must be born again. Those of you that are at home, in reference to the Spirit of God, stand to your feet as I pray. Hallelujah. I told you I was going to challenge you tonight. I was going to challenge some of your thinking tonight. Hallelujah. Those of you that know me, you know, you know, you know, you know my stance on that, on that, those principles of God's Word. But some of you, some of you that may not know me, you, 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 you were challenged today in your thinking. But I want you to go back to your word, and I want you to read that word. Read, read, read this word again. Read it. Read it. And allow the Spirit of God to speak to your heart. Listen to the words of Jesus. Listen to the words of Jesus in John chapter 3. And allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart. Listen, Jesus is the head of this church. And don't you think that if anybody knew what he was talking about is Jesus? Let the Holy Spirit minister to your spirit concerning this lesson on tonight. And allow God to work on you. Allow, allow God to deal with you. That is a difference, y'all. That is a difference. When Jesus said, I'm coming back, Jesus said, I'm coming back at my church. If you notice, he didn't say I'm coming back at the world. He said, I'm coming back at my church. What church? The church without spot, a wrinkle, a blemish, or any such thing. That's who I'm coming back for. So everybody is not going to be in that number. But let Jesus minister to your heart on this evening. Amen. Lift them hands up. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I've done what you told me to do. I've said what you told me to say. I spoke forth uh, the words that you have placed in my heart to speak. Now, God, take those words and begin to deal with those hearts and deal with those minds concerning this lesson on tonight. I pray for a stirring, a stirring in the hearts of your people. Even those of us that are born again, there are some that are even born again that are losing their grip, being swayed by the ph philosophies of this world. When your word told us to be not conformed to this world, but to be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. There's some that are being swayed by thinking, philosophies, and opinions. But God, help us to stick with your word. Help us to stand on the principles of your word. And I pray, oh God, that every person that will hear this teaching on this evening 
will open up their heart and receive you into their life right now. I pray that others will double down on their faith, double down on their belief, and stand on your word like never before. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Forgive. Forgive every sin this evening, Lord. That person that's seeking and desiring you in their life, forgive them of their sins. Wash them now in your blood. As they repent right now, wash them, oh God. Come into their heart. Move in their heart. Save them. Save them now. Spirit of the living God, move into that heart right now in Jesus' name. Give them brand new life. And we thank you for it in advance right now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Begin to clap your hands right where you are and tell God thank you. Lord, I thank you for your word this evening in Jesus' name. I pray that it was a blessing in your heart and in your life. God bless you, my friends. Listen. It has been an honor and a privilege to have ministered to you again on this evening. Just before we close, we're going to open up a time for giving. We're going to open up a time for giving. Go ahead and prepare uh, a, a blessed offering uh, for the Lord on this evening. Go ahead and make those transactions right now. Listen, let's give in a, in a, in a uh, bountiful way on this evening. If God has blessed you and blessed your life, amen. Uh, on this week, go ahead and bless God with a good sacrificial offering, a good offering. Others, bless the Lord with a uh, offering of your increase on this evening. And let God know how much you appreciate him for all of the things that you have done. Thank you so much for your giving right now. I'll give you just a few more moments to make those transactions, and I'm going to pray uh, this blessing over your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. Go ahead and make those transactions. Stand to your feet, if you will. Father, I thank you, God, for every giver on this evening. I thank you for their faith. I thank you, God, for, 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 for trusting us, God, to, to impart into them your holy writ. God, I thank you, God, for every seed that is being sold at this time. Take that seed, Lord, bless it, multiply it, send it back to every giver. Bless them, God, with abundance in their life. Continue to grace them, God, with favor in their life. Let them want for nothing. Shield and protect them, God, even through this season, uh, uh, in this pandemic. Cover them under your blood right now in the name of Jesus that when the enemy would come knocking at that door he got a pass over father we thank you for your precious blood right now in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you for it in Jesus name let everybody say amen God bless you God bless you this evening we thank God for you uh, just taking out the time for us to sow into your hearts and into your life once again, the word of the Lord. I pray that you were blessed on this evening. And uh, I encourage you to just tune in with us again on this coming Sunday at 1030 during our Sunday morning worship service. There is another word that God wants to share in your life. So until then, until then my friends, uh, we look to see you on Sunday morning, 1030. Till then, you be blessed and you be safe in Jesus' name. Peace.